There's always a lot of talk around the hobby about black basing and pre-shading, but for those of you who are unfamiliar with these techniques, today I'll try and help demystify the terms and give you an understanding of what they actually mean, but more importantly, how they will work for you and the results that they can give you with your own modeling. I wanted to have a bit of fun with this one and treat it as a bit of a test for myself. And I figured what better way to show the different styles than on the same model. So I first primed the old Tamiya Sherman I had in the stash with a coat of Mr. Surfacer Grey straight from the rattle can. This will be the base for my colour for the pre-shading demonstration. The plan was then to split the model in half by masking through the centre line with yellow masking tape. This is purely an experiment and near enough would be good enough. So I eyeballed the center of the shapes as best I could and set about applying the makeshift mask to the model. Once the masking was complete, the model was then primed using a Mr. Surfacer Black 1500 straight from the rattle can and set aside to dry. I'm going to take you through the painting process on screen, but while you watch, I'll tell you a little bit about the technique, as well as try and highlight what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I want the model to be finished in an olive drab color, so naturally my first layer of paint is the olive drab. For the record, I'm spraying a Tamiya acrylic lacquer thin to around 50-50 mix with the retarder thinner, and the air compressor is set to around 15 PSI and I'm also using a 0.3 dual action airbrush. Black basing is the painting technique, which as the name suggests, is built from a black base and then layering the colors on top of that. The concept of starting from a black base is nothing new in the art world and was initially adopted by the figure painting community it then found its way into the mainstream scale modeling hobby soon after. The other interesting result of painting from a black base is I am able to create interesting tones and variation in the paint finish by adjusting the opacity of the paint, which in turn will create for a far more interesting model. The theory of color is that, generally speaking, it requires white to reflect the color layer back into our eye and it gives us the color we see. Some colors rely on the white foundation to achieve this more than others. Yellows and reds are notoriously weak pigments and require a white or at least a light layer to present as they are intended. So trying to paint a yellow color over a black base can be highly problematic. It's not impossible, but you would need to certainly build up the layers so the way we perceive the paint wasn't getting affected by the light reflecting off the black base. So by that way of thinking, starting from a black base is going to affect the true color of the paint. But by building the color up in multiple layers, I'm able to build up the opacity of that paint and start to get to a place I'm hoping for. You'll notice I'm working within defined panels or spaces. Given the large surface area of the Sherman sides, that makes it a little trickier. But by focusing on the area I'm wanting to paint and then building up the color in that area, I'm able to start forming interesting boundaries and shading around the panels. The other thing you'll notice is the way I am applying the paint. I'm applying it in a random, squiggly, almost figure eight sort of style spraying pattern. This application is imperfect by design and by doing this, I'm able to use the black base as part of my paint finish. If I was to just flood the surface, I would lose all those beautiful model random tones. This application is a certain style of painting that some might not like, but for me, this random mottled finish is enjoyable to produce and just makes for a far more interesting model. Obviously, this application is going to heavily depend on the subject you are painting. I wouldn't be doing this if I was building a car, but the technique works beautifully with most aircraft, science fiction and armor models.
Working methodically around the model, the first layer of colour is applied and you get a pretty clear picture of how the technique can achieve an interesting paint finish with just those two colours. But I want to juice it up a little and add some highlights to the paintwork by lightening the olive drab with a touch of deck tan. The paint is thinned a little further. This time I'm thinning the paint to around 65% thinner to 35% paint ratio. Thinning the paint like this will tend to make it more translucent and will allow the colours underneath to come through and integrate with the highlights in a smooth way. The paint is again applied in a mottled, random way, only this time I'm focusing on less of a coverage than the layer before it. On the horizontal surfaces, I'm working the paint towards the center of the shapes, and on the vertical spaces, I'm tending to focus more on the top edges of those shapes. The highlighting phase is repeated around the hull sections. Again, you see me working in defined areas and shapes and focusing on the paint coverage towards the centers of the panels, all the while keeping the airbrush moving in that clouded style of pattern. You can see the visual volume in the color building as I'm applying the paint over the model. It's all about helping the scale model appear larger than it actually is. There's always room for another round of highlights, so the already lightened mix in the airbrush cup is thinned further and a few drops of wooden deck tan are added to the mix. The application continues around the shapes of the model, however, I'm limiting the coverage even further so as not to lose the initial round of highlights I'd sprayed. Another interesting effect I can achieve at this stage is applying subtle vertical streaking with the lightened colour. By moving the airbrush downward across the surface of the model and carefully releasing the trigger of the airbrush, I'm releasing a tiny amount of paint with each pass. By moving over the same position and repeating the process, I'm able to build up the colour and create that interesting streaking effect. I've built this colour up purely from what I was hoping to see in my mind's eye, and looking at the finish, I felt it looked a little desaturated. A great way to add a little life and spark to a green scheme like this is to mist a layer of heavily thinned XF4 yellow green over the entire model. The coverage is kept to a minimum, but you can clearly see the vibrancy and life the yellow toned filter has added to the model. And with that done, I'm pretty satisfied with my base layer of paint on this black based side of the model. It looks pretty good even before any washes or weathering, but remember this is just the base layer. So whatever goes on top will tend to tone the effects down. So I'd encourage you to be brave when trying this technique and don't be afraid to push the boundaries. I think the light grey colour was altering my perception of the green because I was surprised at how light the olive drab was looking. In saying that, I was happy with how the colour ended up and I was able to get some interesting finishes in that paintwork. It was now time to move to the side I'd primed in the grey Mr. Surfacer. This was the side I was going to demonstrate the pre-shading technique, so I'd be able to compare the two techniques side by side. I didn't want the black base side to influence what I did on the other side, so I went about resetting the masking tape and covering up the paintwork I'd just completed. I wanted this to be a true blind test, as I was interested in the effect the black base would have on the color compared to the light gray and the pre-shading. My expectations of where I wanted the colour to end up was again all in my mind as I didn't want to be biased by any references. With the mask in place, I could now look to apply my pre-shade using a Tamiya Rubber Black. The idea of the pre-shade is to create variation in the base layer in the hope that when I apply the colour over the top, 
Those shades and effects will come through the colour giving an interesting look to the paintwork. When I'm applying my shading layer, I'm focusing around panel lines, details, recesses and rivets. These will provide me with the basis for the effect and it is something that will be enhanced using pin washes in subsequent steps. I'm working in the small defined areas again, but notice that this time I'm looking to shade them and create the visual volume that way. I focus towards the bottom of the shapes and look to feather them out as they move up the tank. This is no more evident than along the sides, but I'm using it all over the model. I'm also able to create the fine streaking effects at this stage too. You have to remember these effects will only be subtle, but a successful model is all about layering and having a lot of subtle layers working in harmony. The shading tends to give the model a bit of a cartoony look, but there is something satisfying about it. For the sake of this comparison, I will keep the shading simple, but it is possible to add all sorts of colors and modeling at this stage to create different effects in the paintwork. It all comes back to the colour theory and how light works, so whatever you do here will impact the colour that is sprayed over the top. Just like with the black base, the first layer is olive drab, only this time I'm keeping my paint a little more thin than it was before. It's probably around a 60-40 mix of retarded paint. You'll also notice that this time, rather than the random squiggly application of the paint, I'm working it in more of a traditional way of painting and working in reasonably smooth passes. I'm still focusing on smaller defined areas, but keeping my coverage even over these sections. Because my paint mix is a little thinner than before, that is making the paint that little bit more translucent, which is allowing the shading from below to peek through that color. Different colors of paints will behave differently, but in this example, if the paint wasn't thin enough, it would cover a lot of these effects. And conversely, if the paint was too thin, it would allow more of those shades to come through, but it would take me longer to build the color up. A quick look at the model with just the single layer of olive drab over the pre-shaded base is quite pleasing to the eye. You can clearly see the subtle tones and shades coming through that olive drab layer. But with most of my models, I get a great deal of joy through building the highlights up over the model. So why deny myself at this stage? The first layer of the lightened olive drab is applied in a similar manner to how I did it on the other side. The deck tan is a useful color for helping lighten the dark olive drab and make it look desaturated and faded. Now I'm onto the highlighting phase, you will notice my application has gone back to the random squiggly movements in the airbrush. I'm also limiting this area of application and generally focusing on the innermost sections of the panels as well as leading edges of the shapes. Horizontal surfaces would be subject to the greatest fading, so a little more coverage is applied over these areas. Moving to the turret and the highlighting continues. I'm applying the lightest colors around the rounded edges and the horizontal surfaces, as well as picking out details like the vision hatch. Even more deck tan is added to this already lightened mix and the second round of highlighting is applied, but you guessed it in an even smaller area of coverage than the layer before it. I'm also able to create interesting streaking in this layer by moving the airbrush in a downward motion and releasing a minuscule amount of paint as I do. The highlights really bring these shapes in the turret to life and give the often bland olive drab a new life. Be mindful that a lot of these layers of highlighting will tone down under the layers of weathering that generally will follow. I'm painting quite conservatively for this demonstration, however, I'd usually be looking to push these highlights even further. Again at this stage, I felt the colour could use a lift, so as I did on the black based side, a filter using the yellow green was applied over the paintwork. Just be mindful this is thinned to about 95% thinner, 
and about 5% paint. As with most of these effects, the filter is yet another subtle effect that adds that warmth to the overall tone of the colour. It was now time to remove the masks and get a look at how the two techniques stacked up and how different the colour and finish actually looked. To my surprise, the colours were just about identical and in terms of the finish, there wasn't a great deal in it either. When painting using these techniques, it's important to think about your thinning ratios and the way you're applying the paint. And yes, it would be possible to flood the model in a dense paint coverage and produce more or less the color straight from the jar. But you use these techniques to create an effect and present your paint finishes in a more interesting way. I appreciate I painted the model using the same paint colors, but I really expected that that black base would have had a greater influence on the overall tone. I think each of the techniques has its merits and they both look good for different reasons, but doing this experiment was a reminder that achieving a result is more about having a clear vision and knowing what you're wanting to see on your model and then working towards that. It's the old adage, there are many ways to skin a cat. Different thinning ratios as well as spraying templates and varying base colors on your pre-shade layer can create interesting effects. But from what I can see, the base color you start from doesn't have that much influence on the overall outcome, or at least when comparing black basing to pre-shading. If I had to choose a preference, I'd have to say the black base side was a little more varied and a little more interesting to my eye, although I feel I could have adjusted my spraying technique a little on the pre-shaded side to have got something that was pretty close. But what do you guys think? Do you have a preference with your own models? I'd love to hear about your experiences down below and if you'd like to try one of the techniques I've shown here. You know the drill guys, this is the greatest hobby in the world. Share it with your family, share it with your friends, and let's be proud of what we do. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Okay, get building.